Hey, what's up, guys? How are y'all? Welcome back to the OS Rick podcast. I hope you guys are having a wonderful day. Um, it is Monday, November the 28th. So Thanksgiving just passed by. I hope you guys had a wonderful holiday. They're able to chill, relax, unwind, eat some food, play some games, watch some football. If anything, maybe just get out of work for a day and then relax. If you guys had to work, I really feel for you. But thank you very much if you guys did. Anyways, guys, uh, hanging out. Appreciate it. I'm glad you're here, whether you're on your way to work, uh, you're at work, or you're working out, or just hanging out. Man, I really appreciate you guys listening and hanging out. It means the world to me. Um, let's get things started, guys. How are y'all? How have y'all been? Um... I took all of last week off, so sorry for the scheduling on the podcast. I know it's going to have been off with the holidays and everything being so hectic at work. Um, I, need this, I needed last week just to recharge and get my, my perspective back in order, get my mindset ready, and just relax my mind. Because I haven't been doing so hot, if you guys haven't told, haven't, been, haven't noticed, but, you know, just trying to deal with everything. But, you know, having a week off... To not think about work, able to just to relax and unwind and spend time with the wifey and family and playing video games was a good, good reset. So I'm 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 here, guys, to talk and just hang out. And uh, again, just thank you for b- being here. Anyways, um, how are y'all? What games have been playing? If you guys are PC gamers enthusiasts, I'm sure by now you've are. Uh, caught wind of the steam autumn sale and like guys i'm not like steam doesn't pay me to say this shit it's just that i'm that's my go-to like platform when it comes to uh my games i have like 99 percent of my games on this i have one game two games maybe on i think i have a couple of like i have one game that i purchased on epic game store and a couple of free ones that they give you every once in a while but like i said i'll just check in i'll pick them up just add them to my library. I never download them uh, unless it's something I really want, but mm, they have so much random stuff. And it, it gets you thinking sometimes. It's like, how much money do you guys think? I'm pretty sure this information is out there. I just haven't looked it up. But how much money do you guys think Epic Game Store spends on just getting these free games to get them out? Because And they're always random, right? Like, you see some stuff, like, oh, yeah, this is cool, okay, whatever. And then you kind of just, but I, I don't know. I just, me being a, such a very picky on what I play, it's hard for me to, like, you know, again, it's free, though, so it doesn't matter. But anyways, guys, um, I'm so going to the Steam Autumn sale, uh, I gave myself an arbitrary number of $60 because I told myself, look, most games now are you know 59.99 plus tax so 60 bucks plus a couple of you know little wiggle room for the taxes and stuff so i figured you know what let me see if i could get some games and, and see what i could pick up see if it's any good deals and i looked around i looked around i looked around at one of the banners was the capcom sales and i was able to pick up resident evil 2 resident evil 3 and devil may cry 5 for 9.99 each so right at the gate, I was like, okay, I'm pretty, I feel pretty excited for, about these games at, at that price point. I mean, that, that just looks good. So that leaves me roughly $30 left over. And it's down to two choices, which I need to make up my mind by, <laughs> I got to make up my mind by like Tuesday, right? So it's coming down to either Cyberpunk 2077 at 50% off. So it, it weighs in at $29.99. And then I think that's uh, Monster Hunter World. Monster Hunter Rise, I should say. Uh, coming in at like $20, I believe, $19.99. I, don't, I forgot how much the discount was. So it's coming down to those two games. Uh, I'm kind of leaning more towards Cyberpunk. But Monster Hunter seems fun also. I saw some people streaming it and just watching them play. And I was like, man. And I asked around... Um, you know, I, 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 I was talking to one of my online buddies, and he said that Monster Hunter Rise is a little faster with the, uh, the with the, the addition of these wire bugs, so you traversals more, more, more. I guess more zippy, and climbing terrain and getting around terrain, uh, and you could play. From what I gathered, you could play more solo and don't need to have multiplayer, which was right up my alley. Like, 
I wouldn't mind some multiplayer here and there, but mostly I'm a solo player. So, I, like I said, I got to make up my mind between those two. Um, but even then, even if I don't make a decision uh, with Devil May Cry, DMC5, RE2, and RE3, I, I, got, I got stuff to play. So there's no, there's no worry about that. And the thing is, even they have a sale now, you know in two months they're going to have another sale. They're going to have a winter sale, a spring sale summer sale so it's, it's not the end of the world if i don't pick them up now it's fine but usually when it comes to this kind of stuff i, I want to wait around unless it's something that i gotta have day one then i'll just you know pick it up but if not then i'll wait for the discounts and they usually roll around eventually they'll come around right um but so i've been playing devil may cry 5 and i've been enjoying it it's fun playing as Nero. V and Dante. Dante has so many tools, so many stances, so many. He has different stances within with different weapons. Uh, he has a lot. Big toolkit. I like that. Uh, narrow, pretty straightforward. Uh, and he has different depending on what arm you. He has like a prosthetic arm that has different abilities. Uh, that's super cool. I've been enjoying him. Like, I like Nero. Uh, he's a really straightforward uh, character. And then V, surprisingly, I think I'm gelling with, with V the most. At first, I was thinking, a puppet character? You gotta Because you'll summon a, 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 a mutant uh, raven griffin that you know will do your range attacks. And then you get like a shadow panther to do your, your melee attacks. And meanwhile, as V, you're kind of like ducking and dodging and moving away from enemies while your your pets are doing all the damage. And they have their separate uh, health bars too, so they can take damage if you're not careful. And then once you have your special gauge filled up, you can summon uh, a nightmare. It's a giant meteor that becomes a bipedal monster that beats up other enemies. So that's pretty cool too. Uh, so right now, out of the three, I'm digging V. But the other two guys are, 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 are also fun. Of it. And, and they're all unique and different. I mean, you could definitely tell when you're playing another character, and which I've been enjoying. And honestly, guys, Devil May Cry 5, it's the first DMC that I've played since the very first one back in the PS2 days. So, I mean, it has been a long time. I mean, I remember Devil May Cry playing as Dante, you know, having all these awesome moves. It was like playing a platinum game before platinum games. <laughs> So, you know, I knew it was over-the-top stylish uh, combos and uh, and action scenes and everything. So, Devil May Cry 5 really... So, like, I don't know what happened in between from, from 1 to 5. I, I just know Dante more as a fighter from in, 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 the, in the Marvel series, uh, um, uh, MVC series. But, you know, apparently a whole bunch of story has changed. Uh, uh, you know, uh, a, lot has, a lot has happened for Dante, right? But anyways, playing this game, it's so over the top with the action. You got these hammy one-liners. Uh, it's just, I mean, it's just silly, and, and I love, and I love that the that it leans into it. It's awesome. I love it, especially coming like someone who enjoys JoJo's Bizarre when it's just you know that over the top silliness and one liners. I mean, this has it in spades, and this does a good job. It doesn't take it seriously. It leans into that, and I've been having a blast. So I started playing the game right, and I saw the difficulty options, and it said uh, one was um, Demon Hunter or Devil Hunter. You know, for veteran uh, veteran players of the DMC series, this is the 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 the, the the difficulty to start with. I was like, okay. And then I saw the other one, Human, for beginners uh, of the series. I'm like, okay, well, you know, I never really played a DMC since a long time ago. Let me start with, with Human, right? And then I'm playing and playing and playing. I was like, man, this game, this is really, really easy. Enemies are just kind of standing around. I'm like, okay. And then I asked chat, right? Like, yeah, dude, you're in, uh, you're, uh, you're, that's baby mode, dude. That's what babies play. And I'm like, oh. Well, I'm obviously not a baby, so I have to I have to up the difficulty, right? At least normal. I'm not gonna just play it on on e on baby mode. So I went to the game. I was like, all right, let me put on normal mode. Oh, you can unless you want to start a new run. I'm like, oh, great. So I'm probably gonna start a new run on 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 normal difficulty and play the game. And and because I noticed like they just stand around and don't hit you. I'm like, 
That's odd. I haven't died since I played the game. I haven't had to use a continue. My damage barely even like moves when I get hit. I was like, oh, great. I've been playing baby mode, easy mode. It's like, okay, well, I got to go back and fix that because not that I want a freaking challenge where I'm like banging my head against the wall. I got that with Elden Ring. Thank you very much. So I just want to play, not that I want it to be super easy where I'm just steamrolling through everything, but I want at least something of a challenge where I'm like, okay, I, I, where I have to better myself and do more optimal combos. Because just like in any games you, you that I play, I notice, you know, if um, if the computer lets you get away with something... And you keep just doing that, it becomes part of your, your bread and butter, your, your your routine of how to do to approach a problem in the game. But sometimes, you know, it doesn't work when the difficulty gets upped. And that might not be the most optimal way of playing it. So I kind of want to approach it that way. Because also, if you guys ever play fighting games, you know when you play a fighting game and you play someone that isn't really into fighting games... You notice that if you keep playing them, your kind of your skill kind of just diminishes because you're you're getting away with stuff you shouldn't be getting away with, and it's not until you play someone that's way better than you, you start realizing, yeah, there is gaps and holes in my gameplay, and I gotta tighten up to make this better. So uh, that's how I'm kind of approaching uh, DMC Five, where I don't want the hardest challenge, but I want at least the game to push back a little bit so I can like at least be somewhat optimal. So when I play the game again. Or, or if I step if I step away from the game and come back, at least I I could like re- try to remember what I was doing and just not do the 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 lame just the, the, don't spam the, you know just forward and Y button. I don't want to do that because that's boring. But watching the game, playing the game, um, uh, I, of course I've been playing on the PC, and it's been running phenomenal. The only thing I did change, and I'm curious on how you guys feel about it, but I I put V Sync on. And I know usually when it comes to fighting games, you want to keep the V-Sync off to, to, to keep the latency down. But I figured when it's just like a game like this, like DMC, like with the V-Sync on, I'm, a little latency isn't going to be a problem. It's not like I'm actually having to count frames. Um, so I think I'll be okay with that. Um, but the options on there, uh, I've been uh, very pleasant with, with how they work and how they fi- function. It's pretty pretty simple. Um, I'm hearing a lot of people say that the ports that Capcom is doing into the PC side are are really are really good. Um, are, are it's almost like Capcom knows that the PC audience, um, you know, you you gotta not to have to cater for them, but you want to make sure you you give them something good, right? I've also been reading around also that you know Capcom wants to focus more on PC gaming, which I'm all for because consoles fine consoles fine but you can't forget that you know pcs have been been on the rise so there's a lot more you know steam and i, I think i've brought up some numbers before guys where like steam users are, are climbing so you don't want to alienate that that base either right so uh just by watching the game and seeing the options that they have and i noticed that they're using the re engine and you know I remember playing Resident Evil 8 with the RE engine, and I liked it. I, it was, I had a good time with that one. Uh, I remember, you know, uh, the, the character models would look pretty good and everything. But, you know, you, you play it as first person, so you don't really get to see your character all too often. You know, you'll see the other characters, Lady Dimitrescu, uh, the Duke, and, um, you know, the villains, right? But, you know, as to, see, just to see the models, the human models, you, you don't see them too often. But in DMC, you know, you there's cutscene after cutscene. Well, not too, it's not too much cutscenes, but you see there's some cutscenes here and there, and you see the other characters, the other the, the other cast, and they look pretty good with his engine. I'm thoroughly impressed. So, because that was kind of my issue with Street Fighter VI when I first saw the 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 release trailer, the te- teaser trailer. You know, I wasn't really digging this 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 style, this uh, this hyper realism hyper realism look. You know, I've been used to the whole, you know, the 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 pixelated sprites, the kind of you know, using the Unreal Engine two D slash three D models and stuff like that, where they still look kind of you know comic book style ish. So you know, and and then some of the you know, like in, in Street Fighter four, they kind of had that 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 very heavy black border around the, the the bodies and the artwork and the style and then even resident e and 
Resident Evil 5. And in Street Fighter 5, you know, there's still kind of like, you know, that cartoony look to it, you know. So looking at Street Fighter 6 with that, using the RE engine and giving that lifelike look, I wasn't sold at first, but after seeing, you know, Dante and Nero and V and Nico and all the characters from DMC5, like, I'm more sold on this engine. And, and, and then thinking about it even more deeply, thinking about it more critically, is with engine with um, Capcom having their own proprietary engine built in house, I think that's going to be a lot better for them in the long run because they will be able to push it to how because you know since they're the creators of it, they'll be able to push it and and, and get the max out of it com- instead of having to use someone else's engine. You know, so I'm, I'm that where I was kind of cautious about on Street Fighter Six like. Now I'm like more excited for it, so I'm I'm going into Street Fighter Six just like even more more excited to play it now because just seeing what the RE engine is capable of, I'm a lot more confident in in, in how this game's gonna just look and feel and play. So I'm excited for that. Uh, Resident Evil Two and Three. Uh, I played Resident Evil Two way back when I was younger. I had a copy on the PS4, but it just I don't know. I, I guess at the time, I just it just didn't grab me. Uh, so I decided to pick it up again. Like I said, it's at ten dollars on 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 Steam. So I was like, you know what? I'll give it another shot. And I think this will be the way. To, I think it'll be a fun game to not only just play but also stream also. And then you know, Resident Evil Three. I heard some issues with it where they kind of like there's some stuff that was missing. Some you know, some zones have been cut out. So, but even if they did that. At that price point, it's like, can you really argue, you know, the, you know, what they've cut out? Maybe, but, you know, like I said, at, at $10, okay, I'm, I'm excited. So, one thing I was looking forward to when uh, I was looking through the Steam sale, because um, right before I took my break from fighting games, I was playing a lot of Guilty Gear Strive. I've been enjoying it, and I want to get back into it, right? But there just hasn't been anything that that has been wanting me to go back. I mean, maybe if I get more news about cross-play or maybe a balance update or, you know, a, a character that I want to play as. But, you know, they got Sin Kiska coming out or just that came out uh, last Thanksgiving. He looks pretty fun. He looks pretty cool. I want to pick him up, but I don't want to pick him individually. I want to get the character pass, right? So I was thinking, well... Autumn Cell, they just got a new character, and they got season two, you know, uh, on track. So maybe season one, they'll put it on sale, all right? No, they haven't at all. And which gets me thinking, it's like, Arc System, what are you, what are you guys doing? You got, This is a good chance to put season one character pass on sale for everybody who missed out on it to get it. And then get ready into uh, uh, season two, or hell, maybe bundle season one and two, and and put a little price uh, price break or something. But they haven't done that, and I find that really weird because when it comes with Street Fighter Five, that game, yes, I do love Street Fighter Five. I did buy, um, I did buy the first character pass. The other one was gifted. And then I kind of waited around until they had the championship edition, and they included like the 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 previous four character seasons, the previous four character passes, um, and then season five came out, which I never bother, uh, bothered to pick up. But when it comes to fighting games, it's not that I want to have all the characters because i want to play with all of them usually you know i stick to one or two characters and that's it but i want to i want to have these other characters in case somebody comes over and wants to play oh because my, my sometimes uh last time my friend dirk was here he's like hey i play as as a uh, biken also and i don't have biken or you know um or maybe you know so I, someone comes over and like oh yeah i played go lewis dickinson or maybe they want to play, uh, you know, Happy Chaos. It just sucks that even though I don't play the season, the you know, the, the DLC characters, when someone comes over, I don't want to be that friend. It's like, oh, yeah, I don't got them. And the thing is, I don't have them. But I, I would like to have them, but not... Like, I just wish they would put them on freaking on sale or something like that. So, I mean, and I find it funny that, you know... They'll sell like character color passes 
or you know um additional colors for your characters but at the same time it's like you know pc folks just mod it and they'll put whatever colors they want in the game so i would just find that kind of weird you know i like i mean i get it for consoles but anyways it doesn't matter it doesn't matter just arc system if you're listening or if you guys know arc system just tweet at them as like come on put season one on freaking cell honestly i just want to play it um i think that's about it on the whole autumn cell but yeah guys uh, i've been just uh, looking at stuff playing uh getting into capcom games and look at the re engine looks great can't wait um dmc5 i think i'm like halfway through that game already i put a couple hours and like i said i've been having a blast playing these different characters they're all unique all super cool um what i have been playing a lot right before the autumn cell before i picked up those three games um uh, i got bit by the elden ring bug again i couldn't stop while i was on vacation i would wake up stream for three hours take a break come back in the evening stream for another three hours i mean like and i was just playing and play and, and i couldn't put that game down i don't know why and what i noticed is my first playthrough compared to my second playthrough my first one is a lot longer of course because you know it's brand new i'm exploring everything trying to figure out where to go and dying and, and still learning fights and mechanics and stuff you know by, by the second playthrough you kind of like you've made a mental checklist of where to go like okay i'm gonna start in limgrave then move down to uh castle morn then go back up and do explore more of limgraves and get some you know get some caves and get some stone explore some caves to get some stones to level up my weapons and then head into freaking stormville castle and then go from lernia go mess around with that and then go around back to Kalid. and you but you you start to form a uh, uh, form a game plan right so I noticed that my second playthrough, a lot shorter than my first, but I missed so much stuff. I forgot to talk to Patches. I forgot to advance the the quest line with, uh, uh, what's the name, Juno? Not Juno, uh, uh, Sir Davalos. He has to look for his assistant. Uh, I forgot to, I almost forgot how to do freaking Ronnie's quest line. Uh, I missed so many NPCs along the way. And it was like, oh, great. You know, so the next thing I know, like I'm already heading all the way through, you know, to the Altus Plateau. But you notice, like where I start the game, you'll see a lot of more icons of where I visit it. And as as I slowly move north, there's less and less icons that I discovered because I started just beelining to the areas I needed to go. And it's funny. I started my character. I was like, all right, I'm going to do a samurai build because I wanted to play, you know, just I just wanted to freaking hit them hard with the freaking, you know, with the with the the katanas. So I made my way, got the moon veil, started leveling up. I looked at this this uh, I looked at uh, extra life, you know, you know how to uh, fully utilize and abuse the moon veil, and I did, guys. That that that, that stupid sword carried me way too far. <laughs> it's a fun weapon to play with, okay, especially when you pair it with another katana. So I, I ended up just uh, putting all my points into intel and dex and it's funny because if you look at my main character i start off as a as a confessor you know um strength faith and little by little that character changed 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 well it became strength dex which is like a weird combination i know uh so my second character i just kind of like like i was gonna make him something else mostly more melee but then he started adopting some more magic and then ended up becoming almost a mirror opposite of my of my oh well, uh, uh, like a somewhat different copy of my main character I was like, oh great i just went I, I, like even my armor set started looking like my first one I'm like all right i gotta change this so i told myself i want to take a break from the games and i and i actually finished it i, I, I went through uh i, I gotta finish placeju sex on my second playthrough but I, I got most of the optional bosses and I got the the frenzied flame ending on this one, so I gotta go and maybe kill Placidus Sex. But I told myself after this, I'm gonna take a break from the game until DLC comes out, which we're kind of hoping we hear some news with, with about DLC release during the Game Awards. So look forward to that, guys. Um, so if DLC comes out, I'll come back to the game, and if not, I'll kind of just take a break, a couple of months. Uh, and then maybe come back later and play again because 
I love the game very much. I do, but I don't want to play it too much where I I just get completely burned out. So I, I don't wait because I kind of did that with the beginning of the game. I played it a lot the first month, and then I took a month off, and then I just got right back into it. So I, I don't want to burn myself out because I really do like that game a lot. I think it's great. It's wonderful. Anybody who loves Souls games should play that. Even if you just like uh, action adventure games, you should give that a, well, we give that one a shot because you'll realize that even yes, it is hard. You can find ways to get around your obstacles, and and and, and there's ways to get around things, and, and it's fun once you realize that you can find something, and you get over it, and you can accomplish something. It's a really good feeling, and I'm glad that game offers that. It doesn't hold your hands. It doesn't tell you where to go. It doesn't tell you how to solve a puzzle. <laughs> If you miss something critical, you miss something critical. If you find something, great. No one cares. But, you know, it's it's that, that sense of discovery. <coughs> and even then, on my second playthrough, I found some things that I never knew even existed because I just completely missed it on my first playthrough. So, again, Elden Ring, I, I'm loving it. That's my game of 2022, regardless of what anybody says or whatever other people say about it. Oh, excuse me. So yeah, I'm just waiting on DLC for that game. So I'm excited. Um, speaking about games that people are excited about. So since the last time we spoke, guys, um, Pokemon Scarlet and Violet has been released. And, you know, it wasn't until people were bringing up you know, man, this game has some performance issues. There's some things, you know, you see clips of people just kind of like people falling through stuff or, you know, getting, you know, clipping through things or getting, uh, falling through stuff. I mean, you know, just, just a whole bunch of stuff, right? A whole bunch of issues that the game was having on performance wise, you know, pop in bad textures. And look, I get it. It's running off the Nintendo switch. It's not meant to be the most, uh, you know, the most, it's, 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 it's not meant to be, you know, pushing the hardcore graphics we know that right um but all that aside i've asked people around who played it my immediate circle of people who play and i asked them what their opinion was and they all said yes there's issues some performance issues but everybody who's playing it has said they're having so much fun playing the game and i just find that strange how like how it could go through quality control and and they could release a product like this is it, um, is it them, them just having too much humor and, and, and just saying, oh, this is a Pokemon game. We know what we're doing. We're going to just sell it as, ship it as is, and, and then we're going to make a whole bunch of money. Is it that? Or is it, you know, because this is the second Pokemon game that was released this year. Uh, Pokemon Arceus was released back in January. So it's literally two Pokemon games. Uh, I, I consider Scarlet and Violet one game. They just, you know, they just split into, you know, so they had two Pokemon games released in one year. So, yeah, and I forgot Arceus was released this year. I, I thought it was like late in winter of last year, but no, it was, it was, it was this year. So with that being said, do you guys think maybe it's just because maybe developers were just having to go from one game and right into another one? Or maybe the, the team that was working on 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 Violet and Scarlet on Scarlet and Violet weren't up to snuff for the Arxis Arxis uh game? I, I, that that team wasn't the same as the the other team. I don't know. But like I said, a lot of people that I'm hearing are saying they're having a good time with it. And I played it very, I played very little of it because like I said, I've been on an Elden Ring binge, but I do have a copy of the game. The wife has a copy of the game and she's been having a blast nonstop. She, she, while, while we were, uh, while we were on holiday break, you know, indoors because it was raining a lot, she was just grinding away, finding new Pokemon, showing me all her new evolutions and, and new tricks and, and, and locations and, and areas and little, uh, information that they give you and uh, like i said she's been having a blast so you know you, you going back to the internet going back to twitter yeah you hear people talking about oh it's terrible we hate it this is awful blah 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 this game's whatever but you know when you ask your immediate people the people that matter you start you get a, you, it, it, you notice that, that the internet paints a different picture from you know what 
is actually going on, right? Because like I said, all all my folks that I know that I talk to, they've been having a good time with the game. So take it as it is, guys. I mean, at this point, if you're a fan, you know you know what you're probably getting yourself into. But even though with the performance issues, I've been hearing fun things about it. So uh, keep your eyes open for that one, guys. And, and again, it's the second Pokemon game to be released this year. Like, I forgot Arceus was released. So, I mean, who's to say? I mean, is it the whole, you know, crunch that the developers have to deal with and had to get, put the game out there? But even then, even then, you would figure, right, that the quality control or whoever oversees that would have stopped and said, look, this isn't right. We have, we have our characters falling through things. We have Pokemon clipping through this. We have, you know, uh, motions that are super janky. We have uh, textures that aren't popping or loading up or something. I, I, I don't know. I don't know. And I, I don't want Game Freak to become... Because, yeah, you know, even though, you know, I'm the older millennial, you know, I'm pushing 40. You know, I, I grew up with Pokemon. I love the little monsters. You know, they, they bring a lot of childhood uh, memories and nostalgia. And, and playing the games is fun. It's, it's, not, it's you know, it is what it is. It's, it's, it's not, if I wanted to say, like, I want something hard and more difficult, well, maybe, you know, the, I'm not part of the demographic, you know. But it just, you don't want to see Game Freak become one of those companies that just uh, rests on its laurels and says oh you know it's it's uh, you know we made this games before and it's gonna sell we'll just fix it later or you know you like it so much we're gonna get your money because we've seen that with other companies right we've seen that uh with the uh, cd project red when we you know witcher 3 came out it's a great game and they loved it everybody enjoyed it had a great time and then you know cyberpunk comes out and you know they promise too much and blah 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 i just i just don't want to see game freak you know go down that road because maybe this time your fan base will you know um will get you know will be okay will accept you will we'll, um you know forgive you for for putting out a game like that but who's to say if you do it again that they'll still stick around you know because you don't want to get your you don't want to take your fan base for granted because it, it, tomorrow's never certain and you're only honestly you're only as good as your last game right because if that keeps up, uh, you you you'll start losing fans, and and they'll go somewhere else where you know the, the, where they'll, they'll speak with their daughters, right? Uh, I want to talk about guys, um, not so much video games, but I have been playing this other. Uh, uh, I tried out this new tabletop game. It's from Warhammer. It's called Warcry. And uh, if you guys ever played any of the Warhammer games, this one's based more on the fantasy side. I know there's, you know, the Warhammer 40K, and they have, you know, they have video games, they have uh, books, they have um, um, books, literature, comics, um, uh, more tabletop games, models, everything, you know. So it's kind of like Warhammer, and then they have their, you know, their Dark Fantasy, their Age of Sigmar, their uh, 40K. 30K is another thing. Uh, I think it's called Horus of Heresy or Heresy of Horus and all that. I mean, it, this world is huge. It's 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 massive. It's been around for a good while, guys. So, so you know, my good friend Travis, he's he's been a fan of Warhammer forever. And uh, I've always kind of just knew about it. And he, he tells me some stuff. And I played some, you know, a Warhammer tabletop RPG with him. But, you know, uh, and I think I might have mentioned this on the other podcast, but um, my wife has got into the um, the tabletop, the Age of Sigmar. So she started collecting little figures, assembling them and painting them. And so does my friend Travis and his brother. And, you know, I saw him and I was like, man, I kind of want to play this. I mean, what's what's an army I could pick? So, I, you know, I picked up the orcs and the iron jaws. And so, you know, we got a, finally got an army together and we tried learning to play Age of Sigmar, but... Man, I'm going to tell you guys, it is a lot of rules, a lot of stuff to know. And I'm kind of the kind of, I'm the kind of person where I want quick, easy rules that we get in, start rolling dice and having fun and just, you know, start getting the, 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 the figures moving, right? But with Age of Sigma, I mean, there's just a lot. And, and, and I get it, right? There are some people who really want the very in-depth, you know, have strategies for this and situations and these terrain setups and rules for this and rules for that and all that. And that's great. But, you know, we tried out Warcry and it's a lot simpler. It's a very speedy game. Like even I was able to get on the rules and just get like the gist of it and able to get, you know, the flow of the game and able to just to pick up. I wasn't, you know, by, you know, by rounds two and three, I was able to just start 
you know, doing my my turn without having to have a reference to the books. Even though there were some, I did have to look at some things because, like I said, there's a lot of rules in it, but it's a lot more. It flows a lot faster than Age of Sigmar. So I've been, um, and you need a lot less models in Warcry compared to Age of Sigmar. So, um, and I have quite a collection already, you know. So uh, I was able to grab some pieces, you know, just make sure they they fit under uh, one thousand points. And, uh, you know, the game has different objectives. So even though I'm playing with a beefy team that hits hard, they're not really the fast movers. So depending on the objective of the game, because sometimes it'll be like, hey, find this item and bring it back to base or destroy uh, um, X amount of units from your enemy or collect this or find this or, you know, they, there's, there's different situations. So. You know, that's pretty fun. I, I, I'm excited, and I've been playing that. Well, I played that, so I'm looking forward to trying more. So we'll see. So that's another game that I'm going to be, like, looking into to get uh, to try it out. But I think that's about it, guys, on my end. Uh, I know there wasn't much video game news. I mean, there might have been some stuff. I honestly wasn't looking. Uh, I think, like, Modern Warfare just re recently released, recently released uh, Warzone 2.0 or... Warzone 2, um, have you guys been playing it? I don't know. I've checked out a long time ago with uh, with Call of Duty. I don't care anymore. I have hear some people say it's good. Some people say it's mid. Uh, honestly, at this point, to me, a Call of Duty is a Call of Duty is a Call of Duty. Um, you know, people talk about skill-based matchmaking. And I could see points from here and there. You know, some people just one time... You know, want to get in a casual match and just play, but there's too many what they call giga sweats running around killing them. At that point, it's like, I mean, maybe they should have a casual mode and a ranked mode. I don't know. But at the same time, it's like, you probably know what you're getting yourself into. I don't get it. Maybe if I played it, I would get it. But, you know, it's funny when you start hearing big names talk about it. Like, dude, you're like super good. What the fuck are you worried about? Just play the game, you know? Oh, you're not getting kill streaks to show off to your your, your viewers? Oh, okay, too bad. I'm um, boohoo. Life is hard. Uh, what else? Um, God of War recently came out. Uh, I'm not a big. F 2018 one was fun. It had some good action sequences. Um, I did watch this video from uh, a YouTuber. His name is uh, Synthetic Man, and it's like an hour long video but he breaks it down of the game and everything and he just rips it apart i don't agree with everything that he says uh but he did bring up some good points about the game and how the business is kind of go kind of wokey and stuff like that so i mean check it out guys I, I had a good laugh with it um and again i didn't agree with all of he said but he did bring up some good points about it so i mean take it as it is um honestly my opinion is i haven't played the game yet uh, I will once it goes on sale because I do not want to pay seventy dollars for it, and not not saying it doesn't deserve it, right? O honestly, games, most AAA games probably should start heading into that seventy dollar range, right? Games from the PS2 era compared to the PS5 era, I mean, they've just gotten exponentially bigger, hands down. We know that, right? I mean, and 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 we know that because they got to make their money back via microtransactions, DLC, um, you know, all character passes, you name it, right? And, you know, I'm not going to go um, and give you... You guys know where I stand when it comes to microtransactions and DLC and all that stuff like that. DLC, I'm more okay with. Microtransactions, I think that's that's complete BS. Um, but, you know, I, I as much as I don't want to see games go up to $70 price point because as a consumer, it, you know, that's more money. But I can see if they do head in that direction because, I mean, they're just getting bigger and bigger. And we, and we know that, right? Um, but looking at, at at God of War, Ragnarok, just my hot take is, you know, it looks very polished. It looks very well produced. It looks like they, they really took a lot of time to get the attention to detail. But at the end of the day, it looks like it's just... You know, they have these puzzle games that... They have these puzzles in there where apparently the characters just start blabbing out how to solve it right away. Or... Well, I guess we'll just have to wait until 
I'll get my hands on the game and play it. So hopefully when it goes on sale, maybe in spring or something or whenever. I'm, I'm in no rush to play it. It's fine. And look, guys, if you like God of War, uh, Sony first party games, that's fine. Just play games. Have fun. You know, if you want to critique games and have different uh, uh, opinions that go against the grain, that's fine too. Uh, and that's totally acceptable. You shouldn't just like it just because everybody else likes it. Do you like it because you like it? Great. You know. But anyways, guys, um, sorry that the podcast schedule has been irregular. Like I said, uh, work has been super crazy. It's just going to keep getting crazier. We had the holidays going on. So uh, I'm going to try to keep it, you know, just go back to a normal schedule, a uh, steady schedule, and um, just get the video game news, give you my take on it, and, and, and just take it from there or whatever I'm playing and just give you guys my... Uh, my input but anyways guys i want to say thank you very much for hanging out i appreciate it i'm gonna keep this keep doing this i'm uh, having a blast uh guys if you want to help out the channel if you want to donate you can go to my twitch page or the page there's, there's a link on the on the website for the the podcast uh if you want to help out like i'm not asking to you know make a living off this podcast i just want it to be self-sustained and that's it uh if that if you know if money's tight i understand just tell your friend about it that will help out too. Just help the channel grow, right? Because like I said, we all love doing things and, and everything costs, right? And, and I have so many things that I want to have to take care of. But anyways, guys, I love you. Thank you. I appreciate it. Keep playing video games. Keep taking care of yourselves. Have fun. Don't take it. Don't take work too seriously. That's my problem. That's what I got to ask. What, that's the advice I got to take. But have fun. Relax. And I will see you guys next week. Thanks, guys. I love you. Bye.